welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be learning about the physiology of the nervous system. I have already explained the introductory portion of this topic in my earlier video that is the study technique. I will be referring the notes that I have prepared. It is available at a minimal cost in my Instagram page, the link to which is given in the description below. So let's begin. Today we are going to learn about the neuron. Neuron or the nerve cell is defined as the structural and functional unit of the nervous system. It has branches or processes which are called axon and dendrites. Neuron does not have centrosome so it cannot divide. Now for example consider my hand as a neuron. Now it has branches or processes which are called this is the axon and th this branches and processes are known as the dendrites the axon and the dendrites. Now the neuron does not have centrosome so it will not divide. Now let's look at the classification of neurons. Neurons are classified in by three different methods. First is depending upon the number of poles. Second is depending upon the function of the neuron. Third is depending upon the length of the axon. So let's look at it in detail. Now the first classification is depending upon the number of poles. According to that neuron is of three types. First is unipolar neurons. They have only one pole from where both axon and dendrite arises. This type of nerve cell is present only in embryonic stage in human beings. So first is unipolar neur neurons. They have only one pole from where the axon and the dendrites uh, both arise. So that is the first classification. Second is bipolar neurons. They have two poles. The axon rises from one pole and dendrites arises from the other pole. So the axon will arise from one pole and dendrites will arise from the other pole. They are known as bipolar neurons. Third is multipolar neurons. They, these are the neurons which have many poles. One pole gives rise to axon and all the other pole gives rise to dendrites. Now the second classification is depending upon the function of the neurons. According to that there are two types of neurons. First is motor or efferent neurons and second is sensory or afferent neurons. First is motor or efferent neurons. The neurons that carry motor impulses from the CNS to the peripheral effector organs like muscles, glands, blood vessels are known as motor or efferent neurons. For example, we, ha we, are, uh, we have to take this mobile phone. So the signals are being transferred from the CNS to our hands. So that, th that signal is carried by the neurons which are known as motor or efferent neurons. Now sensory or afferent neurons. They are the neurons which carry the sensory impulses from the periphery to the central nervous system. For example, if we touch some, some hot object, that sensation of that sensation is carried from that peripheral organ that is from our hand to the brain through these neurons which are known as the sensory or afferent neurons. Now the third classification is depending upon the length of the axon. According to that there are two types. First is the Golgi type 1 neurons and Golgi type 2 neurons. The Golgi type 1 neurons. The Golgi type 1 have long axons. The cell bodies of these neurons is in different parts of the CNS and their axons reach remote peripheral organs. While in the Golgi type 2, they have short axons and they are mainly present in the cerebral cortex and the spinal cord. So now we are done with the introduction and classification of neurons, that is the three classifications. Now we are moving on to the structure of the neuron. The neuron is made up of three parts, the nerve cell body, the dendrites and the axon. Now let's look at the nerve cell body. The nerve cell body is also known as soma or perikaryon. It is irregular in shape. It contains cytoplasm called neuroplasm which is covered by a cell membrane. Just as we have studied, we already know the structure of a cell. Similarly, this contains cytoplasm which is called the neuroplasm and it is covered by a cell membrane. Now, the cytoplasm contains a large nucleus, nissle bodies, neurofibrils, mitochondria and Golgi bodies. Now the nissle bodies and neurofibrils are found only in a nerve cell. 
Now let us look at the structures inside the cytoplasm. For example, the nucleus, nissel granules and so on. First let us look at the nucleus. The nucleus. Each neuron has one nucleus which is centrally placed in the cell body. It does not contain centrosome, so it cannot divide as we had discussed in the introductory portion of the neuron. Next is nissel bodies or nissel granules. They are small basophilic granules found in the cytoplasm of the neuron. They are present in soma and dendrite. Now we already know what soma is. Soma is a nerve cell body. It is found in the soma and dendrite but not in the axon. It is found in the soma that is this nerve cell body and the dendrites but not in the axon. It is called tigroid substances. These nissel granules are called tigroid substances since they are responsible for tigroid or spotted appearance of the soma after staining. During fatigue or injury to of the neuron, these bodies that is these nissel granules fragment and disappear by the process called chromatolysis. Now the next structure in the cytoplasm is the neurofibrils. They are thread like structures that consist of microfilaments and microtubules. Next is mitochondria. It is the powerhouse of the nerve cell. We, have, we must have already come across this term called mitochondria when we have studied about the structure of the cell. Where ATP is produced and it is present in the soma as well as in the axon, this mitochondria. Finally, we have the Golgi apparatus. This is concerned with the processing and packing of proteins into granules inside the neuron. So, the structures that we studied inside the nerve cell body that is inside the cytoplasm are the nucleus, the nissel granules, the neurofibrils, the mitochondria and Golgi apparatus, five structures. Now we have completed the first part of the neuron that is the nerve cell body. Now we will move on to the second part that is the dendrites. The dendrite is the branch process of the neuron and it is branched repeatedly. It may be present or absent. If present, it may be one or many in number. It has nissel granules and neurofibrils, the things that we discussed just quite a bit earlier. Dendrites usually transmit impulses towards the nerve cell body. They will collect impulses and they will transmit it towards the cell body. So we are done with the second part that is the dendrite. Now moving on to the third part of the neuron that is the axon. Axon is the longer process of the nerve cell right here. Each neuron has only one axon. Axon arises from the axon hillock of the nerve cell body and it is devoid of nissel granules. Now the length of the longest axon is 1 meter. The axon transmits impulses away from the nerve cell body. If this is the nerve cell body, the axon transmits impulses away from the nerve cell body. Now next we have a structure which is called the myelin sheath. Now imagine it as a blanket that covers, that gives protection. So myelin sheath is a thick lipoprotein sheath that insulates the myelinated nerve fiber. It insulates, that is it gives protection, insulates the myelinated nerve fiber. It is absent at regular intervals. It is like a sheath like this. So it is absent at regular intervals and this interval is called the nerve of Ranvier. The myelin sheath is responsible for the white color of the nerve fibers. Now let us look at the formation of the myelin sheath. The formation of the myelin sheath is known as myelinogenesis. It is formed by Schwann cells in the neurilemma. The neurilemma is a sheath that covers this nerve fiber. In the peripheral nerve, the myelogenesis starts at fourth month of intrauterine life and it is completed at two years after birth. Schwann cells wrap up and rotate around the axis cylinder in many concentric layers which fuse to produce the myelin sheath. Now let us look at the functions of the myelin sheath. We have two functions, first is faster conduction and second is insulating capacity. First is faster conduction. The impulses that we have carried, impulses are carried, they jump from one node to the other. We already learned, learned what is node of Ranvier. So, the impulses are ca carried faster 
by jumping from one node to the other. This type of transmission is called saltatory conduction. Second is insulating capacity. Now the myelin sheath restricts the nerve impulses within the single nerve fiber and prevents the stimulation of neighboring fibers. For example, if impulses are carried through this neuron, it will pass through this neuron itself. It won't be uh, jumping or it won't cause stimulation of the neighboring fibers. It will, it will pro provide an insulating capacity. That is, this myelin sheath will provide insulation. Now let's look at what is neurilemma. Neurilemma is a thin membrane which surrounds the axis cylinder. It is also called neurilemmal sheath or sheath of Schwann. I have provided a diagram here of the neuron which will make it more clear.